Hello and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving leak code problem 2268, minimum number of key presses. Before we do, you guys know the drill. Please subscribe to the channel and like the video. It really helps me grow. All right, you have a keypad with nine buttons numbered from one to nine, each mapped to lowercase English letters. You can choose which characters each button is matched to as long as all 26 lowercase English letters are mapped to. Each character is mapped to at least one button and each button maps to at most three characters. To type the first character matched to a button, you press the button once. To type the second character, you press the button twice, and so on. Given a string S, return the minimum number of key presses needed to type S using your keypad. Note that the characters mapped to each button and the order they are mapped in cannot be changed. Okay, so that's the question prompt, and instead of an example, because they're really bad for this problem, we're actually just going to go straight into the intuition, because it's actually quite simple uh, once you kind of have it click in your head. Uh, for those of you that actually used to text on a, you know, a Nokia brick phone, you'll uh, probably understand this a little bit better, but those of you that grew up in the smartphone generation and uh, never had to press a button multiple times to get the letter you want, uh, it may take you a little bit longer to click, but hopefully it won't be too bad. So I guess showing my age there a bit. All right, so now let's kind of wipe all this away and think about how we can actually approach this problem. Okay. So we want to find the most optimal way to basically press our keys in order to type something. Now let's kind of look what our phone would look like. If you remember, it's going to be basically a three by three grid uh, where you know we have the numbers one to nine. So let's say this is going to be one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And within all of these, we basically have uh, three numbers to use each time uh, for a total of actually 27 characters, but we only have 26 uh, lowercase English letters. So one of them will only have two, or we can have one with four, uh, but we'll see that that's actually not optimal. So let's say we want to type the string A, 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 B, right? It wouldn't make sense, uh, and then C, it wouldn't make sense to have, and then let's just say some, there's some other characters, right? It, it wouldn't make sense to have A after you know C and B, because A shows up so many times. In order to click A, we first have to press C, then B, and then on the third click, we get the A, right? So it makes sense that the most frequent characters should always be the first one in each cell. So what we're actually gonna do is this. So we're gonna take our string, so let's just say this is our string, and we're actually gonna count it. So we're gonna say count, and what we're gonna do is this is gonna be a dictionary where we're gonna have, for each letter, we're going to have its uh, count, right? Pretty simple. And now what we wanna do is we want to basically go through our dictionary here uh, in reverse, so we'll actually sort by the um, the frequency of our count here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna place the most, uh, you know, frequent nine characters in the first position. So let's just say, for example, the most op uh, the most frequent character is A, the second most frequent character is C, then E, uh, uh, yeah, E, F, G, H, I, and then J, right? So we've done the first eight, uh, sorry, first nine, now we wanna do the next nine, right? So the next nine, obviously the, the best placement is just gonna be after uh, our, you know, the first character, and it doesn't really matter where, because it's gonna take one click to get to them. So we're just gonna start again for the next nine characters. So we've done the first nine, so this was A to J. The next nine will be from K to what? Let's see, so this will be K, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, uh, M, N O P Q R S. So we'll assign those. So this is going to be K to S now. And then what we want is T to basically uh, Z will be the next character because those are the least frequent runs, right? So we'll say T U V. Oops, that should be R uh, S R. Wait, no, no, we have R. What am I doing? Yeah, <laughs> alphabet. Uh, T U V. Uh, w, X, Y, and Z. So obviously there's two, am I missing something here? No, wait, maybe I'm missing something. It's fine, it doesn't matter, you guys get the point. Um, I may have missed one. I swear English is my first language. 
So as you see, basically we put the most frequent character at the beginning. So that's really all we have to do is we just have to build this. And essentially as we build this kind of, you know, grid here, uh, we will be basically just taking uh, into consideration the number of key presses, right? So if we have, let's say, you know, we have A and we have nine A's, right? Because A is at the first position, when we're actually placing it, we know that it's at the first position. So we're going to have nine clicks from it, right? And then let's say we have uh, K, right? And we have three K's. Well, we have to press the button twice just to get to K, right? So we have to press A and then we get the K and we do that how many times? We do it three times. So it would take a total of six key presses, right? And we would do this for all of the letters in our count and the summation of that is actually going to be our answer and that's simply what we return. So to recap, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our string, we're gonna find the count of each of the characters. We're then going to loop over the uh, count dictionary in reverse because we want the most frequent counts first and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna place them and you know this diagram here uh, sorry this may um, I guess this grid is just for visualization pro uh, purposes you're not actually gonna be building a grid you're actually just gonna do this math here so you're gonna figure out okay are we within the first uh, nine elements if we are then we just need to take whatever the count is um times wherever we are right so if we're in the first one then you only have to multiply it by one if we're then from 10 to i guess 18 you need to multiply it by two uh because it takes two key presses and then from 19 onwards up until 26 you need to multiply it by three and we're going to sum all that up to get our answer so Hopefully that isn't too confusing. If it is, don't worry. When we go to the actual editor, it's like, I don't know, 10 lines of code maximum. So it should be really simple uh, once we go in there. So I will see you now in the code editor and we're gonna type this up. Let's write the code. So remember that we wanna keep a count dictionary, basically keeping track of each of the characters and their frequencies. So we're gonna say counts is going to be collections.counter of s. So this will give us the counts for each of the characters. Now we need to define an answer variable and we also need to keep track of um, basically the amount of times that we've, we need to click that key, right? Because remember, we're gonna put the nine, nine most frequent keys uh, on the first position and then the next nine and then whatever is left in the third position, right? So we need to basically keep track of how many keys we've used because once we've used nine, then you're gonna have to press it twice to use any of those characters between uh, the frequencies, I guess, 10 to, I guess, 18 in terms of the count. So we're gonna need an answer here and we're also gonna need the count and we're actually gonna set this equal to zero and you'll see why in a second. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say for i, so basically this is gonna keep track of how many we've seen and the frequency and this is going to be in enumerate. So enumerate will give us that nice index and we're gonna say sorted uh, c, so counts dot values, right? We wanna sort the counts and uh, we want to basically go in reverse, right? Because we obviously want to use the most frequent characters first. So basically we're going to be enumerating over these um, sorted values in reverse uh, and we're going to process the frequency and the I. So what we're going to do now is remember that between counts of, you know, I guess enumerate starts at zero. So it'd be between zero and eight, uh, we would have a frequency of one, oops. Uh, between nine and I guess, what would that be? Um, 17, right? We expect a frequency of two and then the rest should be a frequency of three. Uh, so what we wanna do is we wanna check if we've actually gone to a new bucket. So we're gonna say if I modulo nine equals to zero. So the first time we see that uh, value, that's actually modulo nine. So remember this is gonna occur at nine and 18. Once we cross those thresholds, that means that we should actually be multiplying by a higher count now. So when we see that, and this is actually also gonna occur at zero, which is why we set our count equal to zero. If you set it to one, you're actually gonna get a wrong answer. If you don't believe me, set your count to one and see what happens. So zero modulo nine is actually zero. So that way we would get a count of one as soon as we start processing the numbers. So uh, there's that. So if uh, I modulo nine is actually zero, we're gonna say that the count gets incremented by one. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that our answer, we're gonna to add to our answer what? The count, so you know whatever the current count, how many key presses we need to press, 
times whatever the frequency is uh, and we're good to go and now all we need to do at the end is simply return our answer and we are good to go so let's just run this make sure we didn't make any st dot revert did I spell this wrong no uh, what reverse oh uh, oh it's sorted that's reversed whoops my bad it's not enumerate that's reverse sorry it's um, it's sorted okay cool there we go yeah yeah it should be it's sorted that's in reverse not enumerate my bad uh, this should be fine now okay cool so let's submit this <clears throat> and we can see that it is accepted so let's think about the time and space complexity here so to find the counts so let's kind of just go down to the side here to find the counts this is going to take big o of n right so we basically just need to count uh however many you know however long the string is we're going to have to count it right so we're going to have to process a string that's going to take big o of n time now we have this sorted portion which is typically going to be n log n but let's think about what we're sorting. How many possible values could we have? Well, there's a maximum of 26 keys because there's 26 lowercase English characters. So this actually becomes uh, n log 26, right? So this becomes 26 log 26 because this is the maximum uh, we'll have to sort, right? We're, at a maximum, we sort 26 values. So this is actually a constant and we can actually get rid of it. So our time complexity is actually just big O of n uh, because of the time it's going to take to actually process the entire string. And also we need to basically go uh, in reverse through our string here. Even though we can only have 26 characters in our alphabet, the string can actually be longer than 26 characters. Uh, so for that reason, it's actually big O of n where n is the length of the string. But remember the sorted part we're actually sorting the values and remember values for each value there needs to be a key and there's a maximum of 26 keys which means that um, you know the sorting part is actually just going to happen in constant time because we know up front that there's only a maximum of 26 keys so we can just treat it as constant so for the space complexity um, it's going to be basically big o of one because we have our counts dictionary but this is storing a maximum of 26 keys uh, so we know up front what our um, you know maximum number of uh, keys is in there right so it's not dependent on how large the string is because it's going to be a maximum of uh, 26 keys possible so that is your time and space complexity hopefully you enjoyed this question looks uh, tricky at front, but it's actually quite simple. Uh, and we solved it using a nice little greedy algorithm and a simple hash map. So that is 268 minimum number of key presses. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and a comment it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you made it to the end, thank you very much doubly, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.